So welcome to this episode of your Guide on Ghana. My name is Ivy Prosper, and today I'm at University of Ghana at the Legon campus, and I'm here for water polo matches. And I'm going to speak to the man behind bringing water polo to Ghana. His name is Sante Prince, and he moved here training young people on the sport of water polo. So let's get into this episode. Don't forget to share this video, like this video, and if you haven't subscribed already, why haven't you? Hit that subscribe button. Let's get into this episode. Water polo, a sport you wouldn't expect to see in Ghana. In fact, it wasn't until this man made it his mission to teach young people how to play and love a sport where he often found himself to be the only black man in the pool. Originally from California, he has Ghanaian heritage and has taken an affinity to traveling to the country and inspiring young people through sports. Okay, so I am here with Sante Prince, yes. who is the man behind the water polo that's happening here today. He's brought water polo to Ghana, and this is a really exciting time because you're bringing something different, something that people didn't really know about here. So first of all, introduce yourself as to where you're from, why you brought water polo to Ghana, and why you think that kids are responding. So first, my name is Prince Nana Kofia Santi Sifabuachi. I'm from San Diego, California. My father's from Kwadaso, Kumasi area. And and I'm here now living in Ghana. I played water polo just about my whole life from Coronado, California to uh, LA to now. I've been in Europe, played in Brazil, and now I've made a commitment to really bring the sport back to the homeland, back to my homeland, because every team that I've played on in my career, I've always been almost a representative for people with our complexion. Being and the only black person on the team. You said it. And as great as it is to carry that badge of honor with me, I really wanted to just be in a place where I could look to my left, look to my right, and see people that look like me playing. Okay. Because even at the highest levels, you don't see too much of us yeah. in the water. So quite frankly, I was just tired of being alone. And I wanted to bring this to a place where I know it could thrive. Because there's so much water in Ghana, so much water in Africa. And it's very important that we need to see ourselves in all opportunities, all facets of sport. And I think this is an important one because it's linked to a life-saving skill. Um, so today is like a manifestation of what you started. How long ago did you start this? What was it like in the beginning compared to how it is now? Okay. To take it way back in 2011, I sent an email to the Ghana Swimming Association saying, hey, I play water polo and I'd love to come by and I don't know, figure it out. And uh, that connection was made and it fell out. And then 2018, I came to donate some equipment from uh, some Olympians that were aware of my dream and they helped me out. 2019, I came with more equipment and did some coaching clinics to kind of introduce the sport. And 2021 was when I came here and said, I want to build a solid foundation. Okay. So this has been something of about a year of solid groundwork. Okay. You know? A year of solid ground groundwork, but 10 years ago that you actually made Correct. the first contact. Yes, that was the first contact. Okay, so a year ago when you came, what was the first thing people thought when you said, I want to bring water polo to Ghana? First of all, they asked if I was aware there was a pandemic going on and if I really wanted to be traveling. And yeah. I said yes. And when I said I wanted to bring water polo to Ghana, it was two questions. One, what is water polo? And two, why Ghana? And it's nice to be able to introduce two, you know, things that have such a wealth of information behind them. Water polo is a whole sport. Yeah. And then Ghana is a complete country of culture and, you know, beauty in Africa. So I get to blend those two and introduce a lot of people to this, you know, water polo in Ghana. And uh, it's been met with a lot of disbelief. It's without a doubt been one of the most challenging things I've ever had to come across. But, uh, you know, nothing good comes easy, as they say. And I think I'm pretty fortunate to have gotten as far as I can with all the support. So um, how did you select people to join? So first it was with the uh, Wutu Winston Senior High School. They had a small pool that I was able to work out with them in. Then I reached out to somebody who was interested, my older brother had met when he was here in Ghana. Um, and she said, hey, my younger brother wants to do water polo. He said, what the heck is that? But sure, I'll check it out. He became interested and I said, let's go down to the beach. Let's go down to the rivers where they're fishing and just throw the ball around and get some people interested. And that's really all it took was just going to the villages where people know how to swim because fishing and you know, culture, we've been able to be swimming. And then just being consistent and saying, hey, we're gonna do something that's really gonna change your life. And I think this is really a testimony of what happens when you have somebody that believes in you. 
Because I tell these kids, hey, if you're not serious, don't come. Yeah. And nobody's quit. Everybody keeps coming back. And we tell them every day, we believe in you. You guys are going to make a change. You guys are leading the world. You guys are, you know, making history. That's good. And That's good. Uh, it's important that they know that they have the power to do that. So, so today's match, how many teams are playing and what are the age groups? So today we had eight teams total. The youngest group we had was probably from like seven to ten. And the three matches that have been going on right now, we just finished a uh, Wutu Winton B, kind of the younger kids, versus the KNUST team. That's about a uh, age range from, I want to say maybe 13 to 18, 19, all students. And then we'll have the uh, Wutu A team, again, the same age group, and uh, the Lego Shark Swim team against uh, some Lake Boys. Okay. So I'd say our youngest guy is probably eight years old, and our oldest is 18, maybe 19, 21. Okay. So it's a pretty solid, you know, window of opportunity to work with kids here. That's good, that's yeah. good. And how do their parents uh, respond to, you know, you recruiting these kids to come and do this sport? Because I'm sure their parents don't know what this sport is either, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly right. We've gotten uh, mixed reviews, to say the least. But a lot of uh, reinforcement of, hey, you know, who is this Rasta man taking my kids to go swim? But we make sure that the kids all are transported and fed and, you know, we take good care of them. We let the parents know, hey, this is something that is going to lead to bigger opportunities in school and this and that. And I think the positive reception the, the kids show to their parents is what allows the parents to be like, okay, whatever this is, mm -hmm. I'm all right with it. And even before we would start training, I would, my assistant coaches and I would go and meet the parents and say, hey, this is who I am, this is what we're doing. Don't worry, we'll take care of your kids. And of course, everybody is skeptical, but then when they see the growth in the kids and the excitement in the kids, they're like, all right. Because it's good, you know, two hours at training of practice for a sport is two hours away from any potential, you know, trouble they could get into. Right. So it's nice to create this family and this culture of, uh, you know, sport. George Ansa has been swimming for over four decades and swam with Ghana's national team. He's one of the coaches for this water polo league. So you're the coach of the team? Yes, please. Uh, which category is it? Which age group? The age group from um, 18 and above. Okay. And how, have you played water polo for a long time? No, 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 no. Not long, not long. When did you learn? I think um, we, started, we started practicing last year. It was introduced to us last year, so we started practicing. But during the Christmas, we had a break, so um, we started. But they were not coming for training. They do it off and on, off and on. So this competition, even not all of us just came. Yeah, we 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 we, just, we are we are even not complete. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so why do you think water polo is important uh, in Ghana? Water polo is very very important more than even the swimming itself, because when you do the water polo, the training alone helps you to um, to build your legs very strong. Okay. And in fact, there are, there are so many benefits in water polo. There are so many benefits in water polo. And how are so, the young guys responding to it? Oh, very good. Yeah, they, they, they like it. They like it because one thing is you you got to know how to swim well before you come to water polo. Yeah. My name is Inok Ninote, uh, assistant coach for Aouti Mitin Water Polo Club. Okay, so Note, Mr. Note. Yes, madam. Um, how did you come about to be the coach for this team? Okay, thank you very much for this question. First of all, I want to thank Ghana Swimming Association, Aswan Cup 7, Aswan Asante for bringing this water polo to Ghana, okay? To making a coach here in Ghana, uh, last year, it is 2021, in April, uh, January, sorry. Asante, Asante came to Ghana, and he came and said, oh my bro, I want us to start this work here in Ghana. But he started already in 2018. So we went to Kumasi, and Asante gave me a ball, and that is the way I started water polo. And even don't know how to swim. But from, yeah, because of Asante, I've known something, and I'm now good in swimming. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, and so you being the coach for these young men, how did they respond to your coaching? Oh, I feel so proud because we picked these boys from the street. That was our center. They are fishermen. Yeah, they are fishermen, and we picked them from the street. So I mean, by God gracious, we're picking them. We have taken them to Kumasi, place that they have not been there before. We've gone there with them, going to the castle, going to different places here in Ghana. So and also, we are in the tele they are in New San Diego. NBC. So by God's gracious, we are going far. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, they are happy. They feel joy in them. And even our next match, last match we played, people have been saying, hey, I saw you on television. I saw you on GTV. I mean, so they are okay. And they are good. 
did you know how to swim before you started? Yes, I knew how to swim before I started. And you're also from the art center? Yes. But, well, my, from scratch, I was with Ewutu. Yeah, so we were there and then Santa Prince came, said he wants to start water polo with us. So, yes, I was there from the initial stages. Yes. So did you know what water polo was? Well, actually, not really, but we had the rules, the water polo rules at our poolside. So we used to read them, but we didn't really dig deep into it until Santa Prince came around and introduced us to the whole game. Then later we did a little bit of research and knew how the game was and then training with them. And do you enjoy it? Oh yeah, we enjoy it a lot, very, very, very much. So you're on the K K and USD team. Yeah, K and USD Dolphin, Dolphin team. So tell me, how did you come to be playing water polo? Well, we saw this game some years ago, barely a couple of years ago, and we were able to play this game through uh, Mr. Santi Boache, who is in the US, and we organized a team. We all actually we do swim at Kenya UST, so we had a team, um, a WhatsApp group, and then later we formed a team over there. So we started training last three months. You started training three months ago. Yes. Please. So how is how has it been? Are you guys? Strong? Well, with this game, you need a lot of stamina. A lot of time and also body balance. They need to train every day. And one thing, one technique I've known is you need to know how to tread in water. If you're not good in treading, you can't play this game. So how many minutes is each quarter when you're playing? Well, each quarter is seven minutes, and the total quarter is four, four quarters. So we play seven, seven. International. Of course, hopefully you want to go to the um, Olympics, which is trying to do in 2024. So we wish you join the team, Ghana team. So we're gonna take that star to the world. I mean, same in Ghana versus that semi to the world. How, how, what will it take for you to reach that level? Well, we need serious and effective coach now. We have the Ghana swimming coach, which is Mr. Ansa, who is now taking us through the training. But with this game, it's very interesting. Actually, in Africa, we don't participate in some games during the Olympics, but now, since due to the internet and technology, we are now observing and hopefully, God will on the Olympics 2024, Ghana, we rep Ghana, we're going to rep Ghana. So, um, you mentioned um, that you make sure that they're fed, they're taken care of. How are you funding this? So, it started off with uh, working many jobs in the U.S. as a teacher, as a coach, private swim tutor, musician, performer, saving up all that money. And then when I came to Ghana and started to make some progress, I made a GoFundMe. And that received a substantial amount of support. And that's really kind of what brought us to where we are right now, getting donations from people that I've made in my water polo community, my music community, school community. So now the plan is to transition from the donations to somebody to really invest because we're trying to make an academy where we're teaching aquatic health and wellness in Ghana. Wow. And the secret is that you come to play water polo. If you don't want to stick with water polo, fine. You still walk away with learning how to swim and that life-saving skill. So that's really what we're working towards. It's been, you know, donations, donations, donations. I was really, I'm blessed to have a birthday in Christmas. So I was able to say, hey, for my birthday, please help us out with this program we got going on. That's good. And people see the vision, they see where this is going. We're the first West African water polo team and we are on the right track to be the first all black West African team to represent in a major way. So what's your long-term goal with this? Definitely to have a national team. We'll definitely be seeing uh, black star water polo. We've seen how successful the black stars of football have been. Now we're going to transition into the water. Um, that's the big plan is to make that us into the Olympics. Very exciting. That's it. That's, that's, I know, you know, maybe as a handout we could do Paris, but my concrete focus is on 28 in London. So one day at a time. And uh, the goal is the national team in the Olympics. That's very cool. But the real goal is to just increase the representation of African-Americans, Africans, those across the diaspora and aquatics. Because there is still this fear of swimming and this fear of water that's plaguing our people. And it's really just something as simple as showing kids they can do this too. Showing somebody, hey, you can be a part of this too. Mm -hmm. So the plan is to just introduce this path of aquatic opportunities to those in our communities. Whether you're in Africa, whether you're in the US, wherever you are in the diaspora, we are allowed to swim too. And it's our time to take over the pools. It is our yeah. time, it is yeah. our time. Today, this afternoon, with all of the games that are being played, at the end, there's going to be a winner. Yeah, so this is actually the beginning of the season. Oh! Yeah, so this okay. is the opening day of the season ah, of a league. Okay. 
So every Saturday, we'll be having some of these teams competing at different pools, and the winner of each team gets the points. Okay. And the championship game will be on April 2nd okay. at a location to be determined. It might be back here for the closing day. That's great. But that's what this, the fanfare is for. Okay. We had a performance by Paul God. We had uh, some celebrities come by. And also it was the launch of everything that I spoke about. I've got this uh, nonprofit or LLC that I've created. It's called Black Star Polo. It's exactly what it sounds like, and it's catering to the diaspora, bridging the diaspora to the continents and even closer to the pool or the open water. Great, great. So, Thank you so much. You can reach us at GhanaWaterPolo.com, as simple as that. On Instagram, uh, we're the Awutu Winton Water Polo Club. So just use the initials at AWWPC. We also have an email address that's also in the website and the Instagram page. And as simple as hashtagging Ghana Water Polo or going into Google and Google Ghana Water Polo and you'll see this handsome guy. <laughs> <laughs> One question I have for you before we wrap up. I know sure. there's some people who said, why did you come to Ghana? I know you have roots in Ghana, but you did grow up in the U.S. You're from, Cal from California, Correct, right? yeah. So some people might question, why did you choose Ghana instead of doing this in California? So the thing with me is, I grew, again, I grew up in the U.S. I grew up in San Diego. I grew up in a community that didn't see too many of people that look like me, just my family. And as much as home is in San Diego, a feeling that many of us feel when we come back to Ghana is a true feeling of home and this a welcomeness. And it was just equating, where do I feel the most at home? What am I most passionate about? Right. And it might just be possible to be able to link the two things I'm most passionate about into one, you know, one nice little uh, uh, melting pot. Okay. So it was just a risk in melting my two passions together. My love for Ghana, my love for water polo, and my love for music. And we've been able to wrap all up in one today. So it's You're been doing a, great. Thank you very much. Thank Not you. easy, blood, sweat, and tears. A lot of work, but I think we're on the right path. You are definitely on the right path. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. So that's it for this episode of Your Guide on Ghana here at the University of Ghana's pool at the Lake on campus. As we see that they are still continuing to play, and I'll put all of the details on how you can donate into the description box as well as in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Your Guide on Ghana, and I'll see you next time. Beautiful. Yeah.